All right, so let's turn our attention now to the engines. All right, so I want to literally have like a game on object per engine for this that uh, contributes the forces that makes you know the the drone actually fly just to to simulate you know a semi-realistic you know, uh, version of the physics for for these drones you know we're just making a really basic version but uh, i i want to show you guys how to set this up because it'll give us an opportunity to use interfaces okay so let's take a look okay so the first thing i want to do is i want to focus on the interface side of things here so c sharp interfaces allows us to basically um determine or just or say that if if a particular class inherits from an interface it it has to have whatever has been declared inside of the interface so it basically ensures that you know certain functions and variables always exist which um, basically allows us then to use the interface as a way to find objects of the similar type right so let's actually walk through this so i'm going to right click on the scripts folder and create a new folder and i'm going to call this interfaces like so all right, and inside of here, what I'm going to do is create a new C# -sharp script, and I'm going to start it out with a capital I. All right, so it stands for interface, just so you know. You'll see this a lot in uh, other people's uh, scripts as well. So we're going to call this an I engine. All right, and this we're doing this because you know we might have lots of types of engines. You know, you might have certain engines that do produce their own force, or maybe you know another type of engine sends all the forces up to the main rigid body. There's lots of ways you could you know, build out this particular drone controller. This, uh, what I'm showing you is just a way, and it might not be the best way or the most awesome way, but it is a way. <laughs> All right. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create an interface. So I'm going to go and uh, set the icon here. All right. And let's click off of it. So it applies that icon to it. And then we'll open this up inside of Visual Studio by double clicking it. All right, so what we want to do is create a, an interface. So let's actually put it in the namespace of IndiePixel. All right, so we're going to say IndiePixel, like so. Just so we know, because, you know, Unity might have its own interface called iEngine, and I don't want to conflict with those. So by putting in the na namespace, uh, we get rid of any of those conflicts. All right, so this is going to be an interface. So what does that mean? Instead of a class, let's let's call it an interface. All right, so that's, that's a C-sharp term there. Now, by making an interface, we can't actually extend or inherit from Mono behavior, so we got to get rid of that there. And we can't actually have our function declarations in here either, because interfaces are really just there to say, you know what, I'm going to have this set of variables and this set of functions in the in a class that inherits from me. Okay, this interface basically, and so it's kind of like a contract. You're saying yes. By inheriting from this interface, we're going to have all these particular items in our class. All right, so let's take a look at this. So what I want to do is I want to create a new function inside of this interface called uh, init engine, like so. And I want to do, and there we go. And I, I want to do another one called update engine. All right, so all engines will have these two particular functions. They have to. That's what we're saying when we create an interface. And that's literally all we have to type. All right, this is just the instructions for that class, or the definition, not the implementations. It's definitions, okay? So let's go and create the engine script now. So let's go back to Unity over here. And outside of the interface folder, let's go and create the engine. So we're going to create a new C-sharp script. Say IP uh, drone engine. All right, and we'll give it the little icon again like a so so we'll say other and we'll look for that indie pixel icon there we go let that update there real quick and then let's pop this open up into visual studio and add our namespace all right so indie pixel there we go and what we want to do now is we want to see how how can we uh, inherit from mono behavior and this interface. I want to be able to do both with this because I want to be able to access all the functions and classes that come with mono behavior, but I also want to do this particular definition inside of this interface. Okay, so how do we do that? All we need to do really is just put a comma and say I engine. All right, and there we go. Now, right off the bat, you're going to see that there's this little, you know, red squiggly line. And that's just because IP drone engine does not implement the interface member init engine or update engine all right so remember this is just the definition these 
when you inherit from an interface, you have to have those in there. So a really quick way to implement them, all right, is just to select it all and then right click on it, do a quick actions and refactoring. And we're going to say implement the interface. And look at that. We have all of our functions and they come with a throw new system, not implemented exception. All right. So let's actually get this uh, reorganized a bit. All right. So let's do um, our custom or we'll call these the interface method. So we'll do a new region called the interface methods and end region. And then we'll just put them in here like so. And we'll keep the not implemented. This is, you know, a good thing to do um, before you actually implement any code into them, just so you know, because it'll throw an error over in the console for you. Uh, and if you might end up forgetting to implement something, right? And so um, just, you know, good habit to get into, really. All right, so that means because we're going to be updating the engine from the drone controller, all right, we don't need the update here. So we can actually get rid of that update function. All right. And we don't actually need to start because we're going to call the init function from the drone controller as well. So look at that. So now we only have, you know, one start and one update function here in our drone controller. Keeps it much more organized. All righty. So let's go and do some variables. So we say region variables and end region like so. All right. And what we need, let's do this. We'll do a header and we'll call this the uh, engine properties. There we go. I'll capitalize this guy over here. And I think all I really need, let's do a private float max power. We'll allow the user to set, you know, how powerful these little engines are on the drone. And let's do our serialize attribute. So serialize the field. Cool. All right. So now let's go and get it such that um, the drone controller is finding all engines that have been assigned to any child underneath um, its game object. All right. So let's take a look at this. All right. So let's go and um, open up the drone here. And what we want to do, so we want to, you know, assign some engines here. All right. And I want those particular engines to be just empty game objects. All right, so what we could do is we could use the propeller, you know, as a position or the, the arm. Let's actually just create a new uh, empty game object under here. Yeah, let's do this here. So let's create a new empty game object from the root. We'll call this engines like so just stay nice and organized. And I'm going to create a new uh, engine and I'm going to call this um, engine for now. All right, let's do that. So. With that done, let's go and drag and drop our drone engine script onto it. Just so we have it all nicely ready to go. And let's also put um, a box collider on it. And actually, rather than, you know, having to remember that, why don't we just go into the script here? So let's go to the drone engine and do a require component. So let's do require component, and we'll do a type of box collider. There you go. And let's go back here and let's actually remove the component and let's put it on again. So we'll say, uh, let's select the engine there and drag and drop this. So we get a box glider. Very cool. And let's make it a lot smaller. Say 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 for defaults. That looks pretty good. Now, what I want to do, let's actually go into like a top down here. So let's hit the little gizmo up here and then uh, let's go into orthographic mode like so and you have to use the alt drag and usual the old unity uh, navigation method and let's actually just place it right over one of those engines just so we know and it doesn't need to be perfect right only the the propellers really need to be centered up on the engine these guys really are just all about generating a force they're going to be responsible for generating the forces now let's go and on the box collider component over here in the inspector let's hit this little edit collider button and let's go and um, hold down alt is it alt or control and shift control shift nope i thought there was that equal you could do it equal i just forgot oh well let's just do each one of these guys here all right yeah i just want to kind of fit it around there just so we have some sort of col collision for the engine itself 
Oh, look at that little icon popped up there. Let's edit that collider again. There we go. So yeah, now, you know, because we have our little icons assigned to it, you can now just select the little icon in the scene. That's cool. Makes it feel more pro. All right, so now we've got that guy all set up. This is the uh, left front engine, so let's uh, name it appropriately. Cool. So we'll say LF. And let's duplicate that now. Let's move this guy over here. And again, you can go up to the top, go to orthographic view. Now that we know everything is, you know, basically situated on the Y direction, we just do that. And we'll call this the RF engine for right front. And then let's just duplicate both these guys and then move them back like so. And let's just rename these as well. So I'm just hitting F2 on the keyboard just to go into renaming mode. We'll call this uh, BF and Sorry, that is not exactly what I wanted. I wanted back left. There we go. And then back right or RB. Yeah, totally hose that, but that's cool. There we go. We're back. Okay, so now we got all those engines all set up there. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. So what I want to do now is in the drone controller itself, right, is I want to basically find all the engines for my particular drone. And I, I want to do that dynamically. That way, you know, I'm not assigning them to some list or array that I've exposed here in the drone controller uh, script. I just want this to happen by default. Now, you don't have to do this. I'm just showing um, that you can. Uh, and I actually do do it um, quite often. Uh, because I don't want to have to have, you know, designers or whoever is setting these up or like an artist or something like that um, have to remember to do that. Um, they appreciate it too. So let's make a private, let's do a private, um, let's do a list. All right. And we're going to make a list of engines. So IP drone engines. All right. And we're going to call this engines. And we're just going to initialize that to a new list of drone engines like so. Alrighty. And then in the start function here, we need to go and find all those. All right. So we're going to say that engines is equal to uh, get components in children. So you want to get the right one. So we want to get components in children. There it is. And the component that we're looking for, it's not IP drone engine, right? It's actually I engine. That way we know that we have access to these two functions. That way we can have lots of I engines, right? And different types of engines. But we know that we always have access to the init engine and the update engine function. Whereas, you know, we could have a bunch of different types of engines that are set up with a bunch of different sets of code. All right. So this makes your code a little bit more flexible to work with. All right. So we're looking for I engine. All right. And you'll notice that by doing that, first off, let's put a semicolon here. That's not going to work because this get components and children actually returns an array. All right. And this is a list, All right? We declared it as a list, not an array. Now you don't have to, uh, make this a, a list. You could, um, make it an array as well. I'm doing it because I want to show off the using uh, system dot link like so. And inside of system dot link, there's a function that allows us to cast this array to a list. And that function is called to list. And then we just need to give it the type that we want to go to. So I engine, and then just put some parentheses there. And we are getting an error. And that is because it can't cast from uh, I engine. It's, and we should have put I, I engine here as well. There we go. So now all is good. There we go. So we're converting a list or converting an array of I engines to a list of engines. This is really cool because now what we can do rather let's just comment this out. So if you want to, you can always put in two forward slashes, or if you want the hotkey, it's control E and C as in cat. All right. So, um, now what I want to do is I want to loop through each engine, right? So we're going to say, uh, for each, um, I engine, and we'll call it engine in engines. All right. For each one of those guys, what we're going to do is we're going to say engines dot uh, update engine and then you say engine sorry <laughs> update engine so you can see 
we have very limited amount of access to our particular drone engine, and that's because we only have access to the interface methods. All right, so hopefully that's starting to make more sense. So we say update engine, like so. So now let's just verify that this is working. So in our update engine, let's get rid of our system exception there. And we'll just do a debug.log. So we'll say debug.log. Um, we'll say like running engine. And we'll say uh, game object dot name. Like so. Just so we know that each engine is actually calling it. So let's go back to Unity now. And let's run the game and open up our console here so we can see our glorious code running error free. Let's hit play. And look at that, we're running all the engines. All right, it's dynamically finding all the engines. We're using interfaces so we keep it nice and modular. Um, and we are now calling the update engine function. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, so I'm gonna close the lecture out there and move on to the next. Thanks so much.